Ethan, another question for you. You know, I think this sort of relates in a way to when West Ham moved to London Stadium. My only concern, I think, for Everton, from my perspective with moving grounds, although you say it might save them certainly from a financial perspective, isn't that on the pitch then there is then this air of expectation going into the season, whether they move in, you know, in the latter stages of 2024 and the season begins or they hold out and have one final season at Goodison Park and then move in for the following season. Isn't there some concern of, of everything going on at the club and the potential of moving into a stadium with everything going on behind the scenes? Surely that must sort of raise some eyebrows. Well, it's it's a reality, though. That's, that's where we're at. There's a, a new stadium being built that can't be put on hold for the next three or four years and let things calm down. I mean, it's just it's just the, the, the pack of cards that you've been dealt at the moment. So, uh, you know, that's we've got to get on with it. The stadium itself, I mean, you mentioned about the London Stadium. This is chalk and cheese in terms of the football uh, quality of experience in terms of the new stadium compared to the London Stadium. London Stadium is always, you know, an Olympic stadium built for athletics. This is a genuinely probably going to be the best football type stadium in in, in the world. Uh, the design has been incredible. The architect's done a great job and I think it will enhance. I think there's going to be significant uplift in revenue for, uh, for Everton, you know, with the new stadium, of course, provided they're in the Premier League. So uh, what, what kind of revenues are we looking at, Keith? I think at the moment, you know, they're um, about 100, 180 million turnover a year. You know, could we could they be reaching potentially Tottenham levels of revenue? I mean, you're I talking about the stadium they, being better than no, Tottenham's, yeah? No, I don't think you'll ever be able to reach Tottenham just purely because the London factor and the, mm. the London waiting in terms of hospitality prices, etc. But I think you could see an uplift of, uh, you know, maybe 25%, something of those sort of areas. Um, and what it would do, I think, and let's not get carried away with what it will do, but it would keep Everton in like the top eight of revenue yeah. earners. Uh, it wouldn't catapult them to the top, but it would keep them there. Now, without it, staying at Goodison, you're going to just fall further and further and further behind. So this is important to keep Everton up there in the top level. Is there any feeling, though, of the bit, you know, bittersweetness, Keith? Because, of course, it reminds me as well when Brentford fans moved from Griffin Park to now the GTEC Community Stadium. When you talk to them, they're, they are always so fond of the ground. Do you think Evertonians really feel the same about Goodison? Are there any fans that are actually sort of questioning the move despite it going ahead? Yeah, look, of course there are. I mean, in my time, I also looked at another grand move to, uh, to Kirby. Mm -hmm. And I had death threats, all sorts of issues because fans love Goodison. And I understood that. And the thing was, though, Goodison is a it's a fantastic atmosphere. Everybody knows. But the reality is, uh, I mean, the kitchens were built that not to service hospitality. We've only got 12 boxes. Uh, you know, you're behind pillars most of the time or a roof is blocking your view. The the whole facility isn't it just is not fit for purpose for a Premier League, despite the fact it delivers an amazing match day feeling and atmosphere as we saw last Sunday um, but it's not fit for purpose in the present Premier League and the very important commercial environment and you know commercial factors that have to be taken into account so I think there will be very fond memories going right back to the you know the many many years ago um, of course Anfield was the first stadium um, people shouldn't forget that so now we'll actually have owned all three stadiums in Liverpool at one stage <laughs> Which and is quite, it's quite when, when you were looking at buying that stadium in during your reign as chief executive in the two, 2004, I think it was to 2009. Yeah. Wh why did that deal fall through? Was it was it due to funding, Keith, at the time? Well, th th that time we didn't have a rich benefactor uh, mm. as such. And so we had found a way with a property development uh, that was going to happen in Kirby to find the money to, to bridge the gap to fund the stadium. So we had found a funding solution. Uh, however, if you remember, in 2008, we hit the financial crisis. Yeah. And uh, at that time, the, the potential funder said, look, this isn't going to work for us. And so when it went into, uh, it got called in, is what they call it, for planning uh, approval. And they made the right noises to say, well, sorry, we're not going to be able to support this fully. And so it, it failed the planning uh, call-in hearing at that time. So in hindsight, you know, it was not the perfect solution, but it was the only one that we could have found that was feasible at the time to have done. Mm. Um, you know, the one be previous before that was King's Dock, which was another one down on the docks that should have happened. Uh, and I was just trying my best to try and uh, find a solution to get through and improve the revenues that Goodison were giving us. 
Um, and in many ways, I suppose I'm quite pleased that it fell through and that we're now at the Bramley Moor situation. So that'd be your favourite one, because of course, Mashiri did fund half of this stadium build. So out of the three locations you've said, Keith, you think that Bramley Moor actually is, is the best option to build Everton Stadium? I think the first one, King's Dock, would have been the, still the best one, but certainly Bramley Moor is, is a very, very close second. And in terms of technology and the improvements, it'll probably even nose ahead now. Uh, just King's Dock for location would have been good. It was just mm. a simple walk from the city centre. Um, but Bramley Moor is 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so it's it's no big deal, really. Uh, I think we're very lucky. When I looked at that area in my time, Peel Holdings, who owned the land, were not prepared to look at uh, selling and opening a stadium at that time either. So uh, it was a no-go for us. I mean, we looked at, if I remember, 36 different sites, uh, and uh, we ended up where we, where we did. But uh, it's a complex thing trying to build a stadium for a football club. So many different factors. And of course, the fan base is the crucial one that has to also go along with it. We did go to a public vote um, with the season ticket holders and they approved the move to Kirby. Um, mm. But, you know, as I say, it didn't happen in the end. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.